Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've actually put up a video. Uh, about a year and a half, in fact. And just to give you a little backstory, I was not expecting these videos to be nearly as successful as they have been. I was simply, I actually kind of made the videos for myself. Um, and I was, you know, we weren't actually using Reactor in school, but I decided, you know, this would be a good program for me to sort of exercise my knowledge on the new things I learned in uh, our synthesis class. And I thought, you know, if I do these sort of exercises I made for them for myself, I can upload them later and maybe people will get something out of it. Um, and woe is me when these videos are after about a year or sooner are at the top of Google and YouTube searches uh, which is frankly amazing so um, yeah you guys are awesome um, apparently I mean it's also I've come to the realization that there are just not very many good tutorials on the internet available for just the very beginning aspects of how to make a synthesizer and reactor and I guess uh, my my previous videos have filled that void somewhat in just making you allowing you to get something to work so they can try it and feel like you're making progress and I, I guess um, I want to I want to continue on that mantra. I want to, uh, you know, I'm not a super user. I'm not a really advanced reactor user. Even after all this time, I haven't really been using reactor in the last year. And I, um, you know, I haven't learned a great deal, but I have done some cool things. And I, uh, I guess, you know, for now, I'm just going to sort of continue where I left off and up, you know, sort of add some functionality to the synthesizer we've already created and um, maybe here and there I'll throw in some uh, videos that I think uh, like of cool features I think you can add um, or whatever and feel free to uh, comment uh, in the section below and let me know you know if there are other types of videos you want to see um, if they're basic enough I might be able to help you with that um, or just general questions, feedback on the videos themselves, what I can do differently or better. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. So, anyway, um, yeah, so let's get into actually what I want to do today, which is, we're just, uh, if you notice here, uh, this probably looks familiar. This is the synthesizer that's been created and that we've created in the first few videos. If you haven't watched those, I would recommend going back or I mean, if, especially if you haven't even touched on the um, building your own instrument in Reactor. Um, I think those would be valuable to go back and look at. Um, and then when you finish those, come back, come back here, and we'll begin to make a synthesizer. Uh, make our synthesizer more advanced. Okay, so the one thing that, our, that the synth that we're making, is, the one thing that it's missing is a master fader and why is that important well if you're um, you know you have the, the fader up here that you can use to uh, especially if you're using this as a plug-in in another program you can use this fader up here sort of the master reactor fader to balance levels out of the program but um, I don't know if I 100% recommend that practice simply because if you have more than one instrument in your ensemble, perhaps you want to, you know, fine tune the levels, uh, balance the levels within the instruments to your liking, and this simply doesn't give you enough precision that way. Um, so I guess the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a master fader. So how do we do that? Well, um, so we want to make a fader, right? And all you have to do to put a fader on the panel is right click, go to built in module, panel, fader. And then 
um, take the, so you have your fader up in your panel. I guess we can put it in a nice, you know, convenient location for us. That looks good. And we'll rename this master. So we have a little master fader in appearance at least right now. Um, but now basically what we want to do is we want to modify the uh, volume output, right? So how we do that basically, um, let's see if I can explain this. All right, so in Reactor, um, and it, this might be another uh, synthesizer, you know, mod like Max, MSP or whatever in particular, I don't know. Um, anyway, there's a threshold of how high the waveform or the amplitude goes. And basically the highest level that it can go is one. So for example, if you look up in the panel, you'll notice that the highest value is one, the lowest value is zero. Um, but we'll just put it in the middle there for now. Uh, so we actually don't have to change the uh, input values at all to make a good master fader. Um, how, we're, how we're actually going to modify the output of our instrument is um, we're going to get into a little bit of the math features of Reactor, you know. You guys probably uh, aren't, you know, many of you probably aren't a big fan of math. I know I'm not, uh, but this is really, you know, just middle school uh, principles, elementary even. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to right click, you're going to go into built-in module, math, and you're going to go up to multiply. Okay, so maybe you remember from math that when you multiply by a decimal, it's the equivalent of dividing by, um, I guess the, I don't know, it's, it's the equivalent of dividing, the lower the decimal, the more of an equivalent it is of dividing by a higher number. So for example, um, 0.5, you know, the value, if we have it at 0.5, that is one half of the signal value going through. And if we have 0.25 as the value, that means a quarter of the potential signal is going through. So basically what we're going to do is, you know, we're multiplying, you know, if you look at the mul the uh, the module here, the multiplication module, you have two inputs and an output. That makes sense, right? Um, you know, in math, if you take two numbers and multiply them, you get one number as a result. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the master fader, you know, which is has its values from 0 to 1, and we're going to send that value, whatever it is, to the uh, input of the multiplier. And notice, you know, the value changes as I slide it. So basically you're sending changing values through this multiplier. Okay, so what's our second one? Well, if the, uh, if the master is going to determine how much signal is going to go through, the second input is obviously going to be the signal itself. So we're going to delete what we have here on these um, um, the output from this oscillator to the outputs. And if you just, you know, uh, make sure your volume's low. This is what it sounds like now. It's uh, it's no, you know, it's nothing special. It's but um, at least the sound is smooth. You know, we have our envelope that we created. Um, but we're going to want to modify this path a little bit. So we're just going to delete these wires. And we're going to send the output of the saw to the multiplier. So now the waveform is being modified by this master fader. And now we're just going to take the result of the multiplication and send it out to the speakers. And when you play it back, um, you'll notice that the volume, it should be lower. A little bit lower, you know, if you look up here before they were clipping in the red, um, and now, now they're more normalized, which is good. You know, we don't want clipping ever coming out of this program, especially uh, we want to keep our levels under control. 
But now you notice that when you know play and hold a note, now you can modify the volume. And you can play with these values, you know, if there's a more precise or, you know, if there's a better, I guess, set of values that you can use to modify the volume, go ahead and do that. Um, you might even want to set up a low one so that you uh, can avoid clipping at all costs. But, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so now we have a master fader. Uh, what else can we do to our synthesizer? Well, one idea I had was, right now we only have a sawtooth waveform, right? Um, we're going to want more uh, types of waves. So 